Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my greatest honor to share my vision to promote peace through education by encouraging more movement in our communities. It all started from my childhood that I used to watch movies relevant to war and conflicts with my father to see how it dangerously disrupted normal citizens, communities, and families, and how it seriously endangered the both economic and social fabric of the nations. Even though I was just a girl, I could clearly see the effects of war, including long-term physical and psychological harm to children and adults, as well as reduction in material and human capital. Now that I've become a Global Peace Ambassador, I understood the importance of keeping peace at all times, and I also acknowledge that through education, we can promote peace and prevent any more conflicts from happening in the future. This year, I have attended three biggest peace-building conferences in Dubai, in Turkey, and in Bangkok. It is my nature of the work to attend to those meetings to meet like-minded young leaders, to discuss, exchange ideas, and to discuss possible solutions to promote peace and harmony. And the very first conference, which was held in Dubai, left me with a broken heart. I'll tell you why. The very first conference was gathered by 200 delegates from almost 150 countries to discuss possible solutions and implement practical projects and programs to keep peace and promote harmony. So on the first day of the submit in Dubai, we were introduced to the CEO of the Global Peace Organization. And we had an opening ceremony, and we had also introductory activities by moderators. So the very first day was all fun and peaceful. And after the event of the first day, we were taken on a bus to our hotel to have some rest because the remaining two days of the submits would be the most serious days to discuss the most se severe topics, including human rights, gender inequality, human trafficking, and also peace-building initiatives. So on the second day of the summit, I woke up around at 6 a.m. to prepare myself you know, representing your country. And as a woman, we need to prepare lots of things, right? We need to look good, we need to dress well, right? So that means I didn't have time to check my phone. So after the session, I went downstairs. Oh, this. I went downstairs to have some breakfast and meet my new global friends. Here is the irony. Everyone at the restaurant didn't look good. They all seemed so sad. So I, I started questioning myself, what is happening? So there was one of my closest friends whose name was Sherry, he was there. So I approached him and asked, Sherry, what's happening? And he silently replied to me that, Angie, you should check your phone. So I checked my phone and there was the most horrible news that Ukraine and Russia started the war on that morning. Can you imagine that we are at the peace conference and there is a war happening in the different parts of the world? Everyone got panicked. I got even more panicked because Russia is my neighboring country. But we still had to continue the, the sessions, you know, and it was hard for all of us. And there was an ambassador from Ukraine. She was working as an ambassador from Ukraine to Nigeria. 
She was also listed in the panel discussion session. So she took the stage. She started her speech. She talked about potential solutions and implementations to keep peace and harmony, right? But she concluded her speech by saying, we do not want war. We need peace. At that moment, I personally understood the philosophy of war effects. And it was, it was that moment that we needed to keep peace at all times. So from such experience, I understood the critical need for humans for saving lives, maintaining dignity, and helping those that are affected by wars. Now that I'm an English language teacher at Dachin Institute, through my work and experience, I have acknowledged that through education, we can actually respond to crisis by using a mixture of humanitarian assistance and educational programs. Because education emphasizes the development of behavior that is interconnected and linked with various norms and values that people can practice to promote peace and harmony. Education worldwide today is mostly run by women teachers, both in their families and in the community. United Nations former Secretary General Kofi Annan stated that for generations, women served as peace educators, both in their families and the communities. As a working mother, myself, I understand the everyday challenges that women face. You know, we need to cook, we need to clean, we need to look after our children, as well as handling our job duties daily. So when do we actually have time and energy to talk, to talk about peace and worry about those that are affected in the war? My solution was we actually need to identify spaces, communities, and organizations in which women already have voice and power. We need to partner with them to strengthen the women's participation and inclusion to promote peace and harmony through educational programs. So we all women have the most powerful authority to talk, to worry about peace and harmony because we are living in the one same world, right? We do not know what will happen in the future. Because Mongolia is a peaceful country, we neglect the war and conflicts, right? This is so true and common cliche. I'm being honest, right? However, as a working mother and the global peace ambassador, I can guarantee that by participating, by including more girls, female leaders, in the peace building processes, we can respond to crisis. We can prevent any more conflicts from happening. So we women are holding the most powerful weapon. We need more girls, thank you. you <laughs> Ямарчихсаа За тэгээд өнөөдөр би өөрийнхөө хэлтгэлээр та бүхэнд юу ярихыг хүссэн бэ гэхээр 
их тайвныг бид нар боловсрлын замаар тогтох боломжтой барих боломжтой гэдгийг би ойлгосон. Тэгээд дэлхийд аярих боловсрлын салбарын дийлэн хувийг эмхтээчүүд эзэлдэг. Эмхтээ багш нар одоо миний хийж байгаа зүйл юу вэ гэхээр everyday boy өдөр тутам хийж байгаа зүйл юу вэ гэхээр би хичээлээ заана. Миний одоо нэг цагийн хичээл 120 минут байдаг бол би 100 минутанд би лекцээ зай, 20 минутанд би дэлхийд юу өрнөж байгаа юм? Бид нийгэмдээ яаж хандаж байгаа хэвээр юм? Бид илүү тайван нийгмийг бүтээхийн тулд өнөөдөр бид хичээж байгаа хэвээр юм байна. Энэ зүйлээ гэдэг би өнөөдөр өдөр олгон одоо өөрийнхөө ажлаар дамжуулж хийж байна. Гэтэл би ингэ чинь ганцаараа хангалтгүй байна гэж үзэж байгаа өөрийгөө. Өнөөдөр энэ танхимд сууж байгаа эмхтэйчүүд надад хэрэгтэй штэ. Та нар дэлхийд хэрэгтэй байгаа хгүй юу? Яаж гэж бид нарт маш том цогц хөтөлбөр боловсрлын одоо их тайвныг агуулсан ийм том national curriculum буюу үндэсний хөтөлбөрт бид нар их тайвны боловсрлын хөтөлбөр хэрэгтэй байгаа маа. Тэгэхээр би энэ зүйлийн төлөө тэмцэж байгаа. Тэгээд та бүхнийг бас надтай хамт тэмцэж дэлхий даяар өрнөж байгаа энэ дайн байлдан хүнд хэцүү мөргөлдөөнүүдэд санаа тавьдаг өөрсдийнхөө ядаж хөөхтүүдийг ирээдүйд ямар нийгмийг үлдээж байгаа юм бэ гэдэг өнөөдөр санаа тавьдаг байгаасаа гэдэг хэлхийг хүссэн тэгээд уриалж байна. Анхаарал тавьсан явдал баярлаа.